So one of the key takeaways from this section is just that area above the x-axis is counted positively and area below the x-axis is counted negatively. So if we take a look at example three, um, uh, we've got some graphs of functions and we're asked to uh, evaluate or decide whether the integral from zero to five of each of these functions is positive, negative, or zero. All right. So let's take a look at the first one and let's look at the area between this curve and the x-axis. All right. So you can see um, we've got a teeny tiny bit of positive area right here, right? Above the x-axis, this is positive, positive area. Okay. So, but you can see we've got quite a bit of area below the x-axis, right? And so this is negative area. Let me write that down here. This is all negative, negative area, area, okay? So the integral from zero to five um, is going to be negative, right? Because there's just a tiny bit of positive area and way more negative area. So this integral, integral from zero to five of, of uh, f of x, dx is negative. Okay. So let's take a look at b. Now again, you can see we've got quite a bit of positive area, right? This is all positive area. And then we've got this area below the curve. Now it, it's clear that that area has to be smaller, at least by you know what we can see. This is a negative area, okay? So if you add those two, you've got more positive area than negative area. So this um, integral from zero to five, integral from zero to five of f of x dx is positive. Just because we've got more positive area than negative area, we add them together, it's gonna be positive overall. And then finally, this last curve, you can see, again, we've got some positive area and we've got some negative area, right? This is positive, positive area. This is negative area, area, okay? But as far as we can tell, um, they appear to be pretty much the same. Uh, you know, there's just as much positive area as negative area. So what I would say is that this integral of this function, this f of x function, um, is approximately zero, all right? It's, it's as close to zero as I can, you know, we really don't have any way to, to determine whether the negative area is bigger or the positive area is bigger. So if they're approximately equal, then they're just gonna cancel each other out. We add the positive area and the negative area and we get zero. So sort of like the, um, the, the, the first example where we had uh, the ball being tossed up into the air and then coming back down, it came, but he, it, um, it fell downward just as far as it fell upward. And so the so displacement was zero. And so in this case, um, this, is, this area is also approximately zero, approximate, <laughs> can't spell, approximately uh, zero. Oops, zero. All right, I'll meet you for the next example.